Now remember that after you identify the problem or you ask the question, the next step of the scientific method is to perform some observation so that you can understand the problem. If you watch the Nature Science Lecture Series, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So the next step of the lab report mimics that with what we call the background session. And this is where you do some research so you can understand what you have to talk about. So in the, in the lab report template, is, it, it defines this very well. Before you begin an experiment, even before you come up with a hypothesis, in fact, when you were preparing for an experiment, it's good to do the background first so that you can kind of have a stronger hypothesis because you truly understand what this topic is about. So what you're doing is you're doing underwriting research. You're understanding the principles, the key terms, the things that are going to be involved in your pro project. So the purpose of this section is to show that you understand the science behind uh, uh, what you're trying to examine, the phenomena that you're doing. So it's basically a retelling on your own words of what the experts are saying about the topic. It, it should include everything that you know from the topic from doing your research. And that means it's going to be kind of long. It could be between two and four pages long. But basically, what are this, what's the structure that I'm looking for here? So if you go to the lab report explanation, it would tell the things that you should have. So after completing the observations, you should have this on uh, your section. Now, sometimes it's put it together with the introduction uh, in, with the statement of the problem and the hypothesis. But in my case, I like to separate it in its own section. Now, this is the guidelines that you should fo follow to write a good introduction. First, you've got to make sure that you describe your independent variable. You know, you have to explain what you're manipulating, you know, uh, and also justify how you can possibly manipulate this. So in the example that we've been working on, we're talking about this acid rain. So you're going to have to talk about acid rain. You're going to have to talk about how you could possibly simulate that or manipulate the acid rain to, to, so that that could be an independent variable. So I have to know everything there is to know about acid rain. I have to know what acidity means. I have to know how you can measure that and how manipulate that. And you have to write about that on your background. So that is the first thing you got to have. The second thing you got to have is the dependent variable, which is what responds to that manipulation. And you also have to justify how you're going to be measuring that because that's the, me the, the variable that you're going to be most concerned with measuring, which is the outcome. So in the example that we've been doing, you're going to have to talk to me about the plant growth. So in this case, for example, let's say you're going to use tomato plants. You're going to tell me everything there is to know about tomato plants. You're going to tell me about why those plants grow and how they grow. And you also have to tell me how you can possibly measure that. Uh, are you going to measure how much they grow laterally? Are you going to measure how much they grow vertically? What are you going to use as a criteria? How, what could you use as a criteria for plant growth? So I've got to understand everything there is to know about tomato plants and their growth. Another thing that you have to write about would have to be now that you understand what the independent variable is and you understand what a dependent variable is. Now you can possibly try to connect them and you're going to have to research reasoning behind what it could become your hypothesis. So what do you think is the relationship between acidity and growth of the plants? And what justifies that relationship? That has to be written about. You have to go do research and have research-based, data-based explanations that other people have already talked about. You have explored a topic and now you understand, okay, so uh, acidity is going to affect the plants because plants have enzymes inside of them. And if the enzymes are are damaged by the acidity solutions, if the chemicals of the enzymes are affected by the chemistry of the acids, then the enzymes won't work anymore and then the plant won't be able to do chemical activities. And chemical activities are important for plant growth. So if you change the acidity of the plant's environment, you're going to mess up the possibility for the plant to grow. That rationale has to be there, otherwise you won't be able to do this well. You also have to explain um, if you're going to play with the independent variable at multiple levels because sometimes the experiment you just do like you know one of them is going to be acid one is going to be normal so if you're doing it like that it's, it should be pretty easy to explain the difference between what's going to happen in each one of your groups but sometimes you play with the independent variable and you put several levels for example a little more acid a little more acid a little more acid you need to be able to explain in your, in your hypothesis the pattern that you would see in the data you know because sometimes what ends up happening is that you know too little is bad too much is bad, but the better is in the middle. So, for example, let's say we're doing this with temperature instead of acidity. Too hot is a problem. Too cold is a problem. You want the middle. You want the ideal. So you want to be able to describe the pattern that happens in the data across all the groups of your independent variable, all the levels that you're going to be playing with. So you have to explain the logic behind that. You have to explain uh, all of all what you would expect to see if you're doing multiple levels. 
you also need to talk about constants. Now, anything in science, you would see that there's multiple reasons why something will end up the way that it did. It's never just one thing. It's never one thing that causes something else to happen. It's usually a combination of factors that leads to the to result. It's actually very important because if you use your creativity when you're trying to explain some data, you have to think about what could possibly explain what happened. It's never just one thing. You've got to come up with a lot of explanations and then test these explanations. That's the whole point of asking questions, of doing science. So what that means is that could there be anything else that affects the plant growth? Maybe how much water you gave the plants. Maybe the kind of soil the plants was grown in. Maybe what kind of plant it was. Maybe what time of the day that you gave them water or, or, or did you use fertilizer. You know, uh, what was the condition of the seeds. There's a lot of other factors that could have caused the growth of the plants to be different, not necessarily the acidity. Which means when you're doing this experiment, you're going to have to control those variables. Those variables have to stay the same across all groups because if they change, you can't say if it was the acid was what caused the, the difference. All the plants have to have the same amount of water, the same, the same uh, feeding uh, mechanism, the same amount of nutrients added, the same soil, the same pot, the same plant, the same seeds. Everything has to be the same except the independent variable that which is what you're testing. Which means on your background, you have to talk about the logic of that. What are other things that could possibly affect the, the, the dependent variable? And why is it important to control these things? So that is how you write an excellent background. So let's see the rubric and see if the sample that we have, the person did that. So first of all, the independent variable is mentioned or identified in the background. Now, I'm not going to have read the whole background here right now, but I suggest that you pause the video, download the file, and read the background so that you can follow along and understand what, what you're looking for here. So you should read the background of the lab report sample before you continue uh, on this video. So pause it and do that. So hopefully now you've already read the background, okay? So you know what I'm looking for. But does the person here identify the independent variable? Like, actually, Yes, they, she talks repeatedly about playing with the acidity of the solution and she talks about acid rain extensively. So she would definitely get that point. Now, does the person uh, discuss or explain the independent variable? She talks about what the independent variable is. So if you look here, you will see that, yes, look, she describes what acid rain is in this paragraph extensively. She talks about what acidity is, how you can measure acidity. She talks about the pH scale. This paragraph here is basically talking about that. Now, Next point will be for the hypothesis, um, the dependent variable is mentioned or identified. And then you also have to explain the dependent variable for, for the next point after that. So does she talk about the dependent variable? Well, yes, she talks about tomato plants and growth. She talks about why they grow and how they grow. And, and then she doesn't really get into too much detail, though, about the the biology of plant growth and then also explaining you know, what it takes for a plant to grow and what kinds of things could possibly affect that. So I don't know if I would give her the second point too much of explaining plant growth. You know, she just kind of plucks about the deep end of variable. She specifically identifies it, but she doesn't really uh, explains it too well. She does talk about how you can measure it, though, which is using a ruler vertically so that she does do some of it, but I don't think she'd fully explain the, the biology of plant growth here. So that's a problem for her background. So she would have lost points for that. Now, on the next point is also talks about explain the relationship between the independent and the dependent variable. And then the, um, the, the different levels that you're going to have for the independent variable. So going, like going back to the live report, did she explain the relationships? So um, did she explain how one thing was going to affect the other. Well, she does talk about the fact that the pH um, will, will, will kind of mess with the growth of the plants, but she never really explained very well the chemistry of this. You know, she never really explained, you know, um, how how uh, enzymes get affected and that's going to affect the, the way the plants grow. So, so I would definitely not, she didn't successfully establish the link between the two of them. You know, so there you go, you lose that point. And you might ask yourself, why am I using a sample that's not perfect? Well, because it's hard to write a perfect paper. And I thought it would be better to actually talk about something that has good things and bad things so we can work together to identify those things. All right, so what do you think about the next point? Does she discuss the levels of the independent variables? Does she mention those levels? Yes, she does. She talks about the fact that she's going to use several different concentrations of vinegar solutions, and then she talks about what she expects that's going to happen with each one of them. Uh, does she successfully explain why each one of them is going to be different? 
Well, she did kind of say that the more acidic it is, the worse it is. So in that case, yes, she did. But again, she didn't really talk about the chemistry of that. So I'll be kind of a toss-up whether I give her that point or not. But I would because she did talk about the levels, you know, the different levels she's going to be using and what she expects the outcomes to be. And that's pretty much on this paragraph here in the middle. And she talks a little bit more about it again in the very end here, you know, because she talks about 7, the natural pH, the ideal pH would be the better. Even though she didn't really talk about, you know, what causes the damage when the pH uh, varies from that. She did talk about the levels and what would she be expected from each one of those levels. Now, did she talk about standardizing variables and also about why those variables need to be maintained constant? So that's points 8 and 9 for here. Well, she did talk about constants, things which could actually affect the data. And then she's talking about the fact that if you don't hold those constants, you won't have accurate data. But she doesn't really explain why. For example, she talks about here... Uh, that it's important to maintain use the this, distilled this water, the same distilled water for both of them. But why? She talks about having the same brand of tomato plants. Yes, but why? Measuring the same way, but why? So, although she identified constants, she never successfully explained why it's important for each of those constants to remain constant. Uh, I would have looked for something like, you know, water is, 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 the plants need water to grow. So, if you grow water one plant more than the other, you're going to affect the, the, the plant growth other than the acidity, so it's important to water them the same. It's important to uh, use the same measuring instrument to measure them because if the ruler is different, perhaps you could have caused instrument or error. It's important to uh, use the same tomato plant type because if you use a type that grows faster, then you're going to think that, that the acid made a difference there, but it really was the metabolic rate of that plant. So you see, it's not just identifying the variables, it's also explaining why it's important to maintain those things constant. So she would not get the second point, but she would definitely get the first point of identifying the constants. Finally, do you think after reading her background that she, she, she included preliminary observations or background information about the subject? I think so. I feel that I understand more about acid rain, I understand what plants are and why they grow, and how acids are going to affect that. I don't think that she did a mastery job at that, but I think she did pretty good. I maybe would have given her that point. Now, does she make references to previous discoveries? She talks about other laboratory experiments that were done about this and things like that. No, she never says anything about uh, research that's done on, on that. Although, she does mention something here about, you know, uh, inorganic reactions experiment. So wait a second, Mr. Lima, you missed that. It's there. And she does me make mention to previous discoveries. But I was looking for a little bit more than that. A good introduction is between two and four pages long, unless I tell you explicitly in class that you're supposed to cut it short. That's how you write a good introduction, and I hope that you can uh, that you can now understand what you're supposed to do. And throughout the year, we'll practice doing this, and you'll get better and better at it. The length is not important. It's what is addressing all of those points in the rubric that's actually the important thing. All right? See you in the next video. We're going to be talking about how to write a good hypothesis.